Not only have you all come to learn about the company Atomy, which will rewrite the history of network marketing, but also be introduced to Atomy's world one by one. When I say that Atomy will rewrite the history of MLM, it means the past 50 to 70 years of network marketing has had a lot of problems and mistakes. In turn, the past has given MLM a negative image. So instead of blaming the people who criticize the network marketing and MLM business, we need to improve it by starting anew. Thus, Atomy has decided not to compete with the existing legal or illegal MLM companies because there would be no point in doing so. Rather, Atomy will confidently compete in terms of quality and price with discount stores, TV home shopping and online shopping malls where consumers buy daily necessities without commission. By being a business that sells the products at a lower price and gives a commission on the sale. This would be the real concept of commission because the money that is shared by raising the price of the product defeats the purpose of getting commission. There is no meaning in earning money if you get it by making other people suffer. This is why there is still a negative perception about MLM. However, for the first time, Atomy is establishing itself as a company that sells at a lower price than the general distribution channels. In terms of the overall business, the management is both legal and ethical. When we process the payment to our suppliers, we are never late and immediately pay them in cash. So compared to other companies, the management is much more virtuous. With regards to paying tax, we actually asked of our staff and employees to make sure not to sweep anything under the rug. Even if people say no one is free of any dirt, I asked everyone to make sure Atomy is a company that is spotless. Atomy will continue to not only establish itself as a company people respect, but also become the leader in making it happen. If we are able to show that Atomy can do well with these methods, I believe that other MLM companies will follow suit and that the history of network marketing can be rewritten. From this point on, we can't lose our foothold and we need to devote ourselves to this cause. This is the company that you're learning about, the future of the network marketing industry, where it is truly respected, could take 5, 10 or even 20 years. But while we are alive, I want to make a promise with all of you that we will make it into a respectable industry. Do you all want to make that promise with me? Wow, thank you very much. Now, keep in mind that just because you came upon Atomy, you are not guaranteed success by sitting still. Many people say that Atomy is currently the only ladder left that allows people living ordinary lives, the ability to have social mobility. Actually, in front of you, there is proof that this is all possible and the answer lies in the success of these leaders. From now on, there will be more people who achieve success due to Army providing the only ladder where ordinary or poor people are those who couldn't fulfill their household duties or even those whose families have been shaking at the roots. We have the opportunity to add social mobility as well as take on the role of a leader who receives respects from those around and truly rise in social standing. 
Although Atomy provides this ladder, the decision of whether or not to climb it is one that you have to make on your own. Since no one in this world will help you reach the top, your determination and mental attitude will become a factor when climbing this ladder. This ladder has been constructed in a way where anyone who tries will be able to climb it. If you are able to climb even one rung of the ladder, you will be able to easily get to the next rung and the next rung after that. No one can just jump up to the ladder to become Royal Master right away. You also can't become a Royal Master on your own. However, if your goal is to just become a sales master, there will be consumers in your downline who want to become one as well. Thus, you need to work alongside other people in order to expand your business. The driving force that allows this growth in your business is the Atomy products. The Atomy products are daily necessities, which means that it will sell if it is great and low priced. Your quality of life will drop if you don't use them, even if you don't have money or the economy is bad. Or even when you flee from loan sharks, you would buy these products. If you're on the run from creditors, you still need to brush your teeth, right? You would still wash your hair even if an entire country went bankrupt. You would find a way to wash your hair. Cosmetic products actually sell better when the economy is bad. What do you think that is? Well, more women would make money if the unemployment goes up for men, which means women will be more inclined to wearing makeup for their jobs. So when the economy is bad, the cosmetic sales go through the roof, thus daily necessities are not affected by the economy. You're not selling the products to just push it out there. You're trying to pull the consumer in, so that they will buy it the next day when they're out. As long as the competitiveness is secure, great products at low prices will always sell. That's why the products become the growth engine for this business. And this is similar to our life force, in that it's just as persistent and intense. Once they are great, low price products, there's no way you can lose when you are judging whether this business will do well as a global company or not. You will find the answer when you compare the quality and price of Atomy products with the world. It will be the world's number one company. I was able to say with certainty that it would be the global company because the people who bought the products last month and the months before, for the most part, voluntarily purchased the product again. If there was an MLM company that had no maintenance fees and people made repeat purchases, it would be considered an atomic bomb. The exclusive power of the business would be immense. That was when I knew Atimi was the answer. I was certain that this company which had $62,000 in sales would become the best distributor in the world. I was anxious for about 3 months. I didn't know if we would get repeated purchases. Yet when I checked, it was almost 100%. I knew then that it was a game set and match. Right now, it is growing off of that extension. All of you have come to know about the ladder known as Atomy. And that if you're able to move up just one rung of the ladder, there will be those who follow and push you up as well. Once you have two sales masters on each side, you'll become a diamond master. When they become sales masters, they will surely want to be diamond masters as well. When they do, you'll become Sharon Rose Master who earns about 10,000 US dollars a month. It's actually very easy and it only seems hard if you overthink it. This isn't something that you need to worry about. If this was something that you needed to worry about, 
then about one third of the leaders wouldn't be where they are here today. Many of the leaders are worry-free half-smarters. Since you have gotten to know this tool known as Arami, you should be asking yourself, how can I succeed? And why are there not a lot of people who succeeded? There was a person by the name Andrew Carnegie. Although he was born into a poor family, he was able to become wealthy and establish the Carnegie Foundation. In his old age, he began to wonder, I was born into a poor family, but if I was born into another poor family, will I be able to succeed? After thinking about it, he was 100% sure that he would. Even if he was born 10 times, he would be successful every single time. So he thought about why most people couldn't succeed. He asked himself, why can't they succeed and realized it was because they didn't know the law of success. Thus, I think it's necessary for me to share with you this law of success. So from the time we are born to when we are 30 years old, we prepare for life by studying. We work from the ages of 30 to 60. Do we work half-heartedly or diligently? Everyone does their best to live well, right? Afterwards, we live out our retirement until 90 or so. Even though we prepared and worked for 30 years, in the end, only 1% of the people became truly successful, essentially they were rich and wealthy. 4% of the people became financially independent. These people weren't rich, but they didn't need to ask help from others. 15% of the people passed away and didn't live a good life. 10% of the people had jobs but didn't have money. And so were living paycheck to paycheck. The remaining 70% of the people were living in retirement without any money or job. These are old statistics from another country and so the currency of the data can be slightly off. But basically, 99% of the people failed in life and only 1% of the people were able to achieve success. If you look at those around you, you kind of get this feeling, right? So the question is, how did the 1% succeed? And why does the other 99% fail? Carnegie's answer was, it's because they don't know the law of success. If 100 people knew the law of success, all 100 people would be successful. Since they can't become successful without it, I need to let people know about it. That is when the law of success was first presented. But these principles and laws aren't something that we can just create. Now, Stephen Covey described this law as the true north principle, which states that north is already predetermined, therefore the law of success is also fixed. Everyone, take out your pointing finger. I know some of you lost your sense of direction when you came here, but point in the direction of north. Which way is it? Everyone is pointing in different directions. It seems many of you are suggesting this way is north. Follow the majority rule, we will say that this is north. Does that mean this is north? We can't be certain, right? How would we check? We would need to use a compass. Yet, even before we use a compass, north has already been fixed. The compass will only help us identify which way it is. Likewise, the law of success is also predetermined. So if you follow the law, you succeed. If you don't, you will fail. Again, this isn't something we can just make up. Instead, it's the fixed law, like the laws of nature. It is already predetermined, right? The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Water from an elevated location will flow downward in countries that experience the four seasons. Spring is followed by summer, then fall, and then winter. These are the laws of nature. If you were farming but went against these laws, you would never be successful in your harvest. Thus, many people compare these laws to the laws of farming. The law of farming states that you must follow the laws of nature, 
when you are farming. I will use the laws of farming to explain about the law of success, as it will be easier to understand. If we use a farmer cultivating a field as an example, so what is the first thing the farmer does? He plows the fields. Well, he would need a field to plow, which means he would need money to buy the fields. Many people have different answers for this. But the first thing a farmer needs to do is decide how much of what to harvest. If you were to harvest sweet potatoes, you will need land. However, with rice, you would need rice paddies. Therefore, you need to know how much of what to harvest first. In order to decide if you need land, rice paddies, or for peanuts, sand. Depending on what you're going to harvest, the decisions regarding what you need can be determined. The farmer needs to answer two questions. What and how much will I harvest? Even though you actually plant these seeds and then harvest them afterwards, the farmer still needs to determine what he will harvest first. When you are cultivating your farm of life, you would answer what will I harvest by envisioning in your mind the kind of person you want to be in your final days? Once the farmer answers this in his mind, how much of what to harvest, he will be able to make the necessary decisions. This process is actually known as MBO, which stands for Management by Objectives. With the MBO process, you make your decisions based on your objectives. Essentially, you make decisions based on what you will harvest. Let's say you want to harvest 10 bags of rice. You know how much of what to harvest in your mind. With the decision to harvest 10 bags of rice, the number of rice patties, the number of rice seeds, the type of equipment, the number of workers, the amount of money that you need, and everything else can be determined with that thought. Alternatively, if you decided to harvest two bags of peanuts, what do you need to buy instead of rice paddies? You would need land with sand, purchase different farming equipment, and plant peanuts instead of rice seeds. Just like how you would need to decide what to harvest, you need to determine your objectives and then manage things based on those goals. Although not many people apply this in their own lives, major institutions like companies and governments carefully follow and utilize this management process. Yet, this process has not been implemented into our, our individual lives. Now, if the farmer decides how much of what to harvest in the spring, like having 10 bags of rice in his mind, he can determine the number of rice paddies he would need, the type of equipment, when to plant, how to cultivate. Then in fall, what happens to the 10 bags of rice that was in his head? It will be stored in the silo or storeroom. So, all the rice that goes into that storeroom must first be in the farmer's head before it can become a reality. Outside of the 1-2% to where the crops are ruined, due to natural causes, the farmer can still harvest at least 95-97% to of the objective that he had set. If, if this is possible, why do people fail in their farm of life? People fail because they don't follow the laws of nature the laws of farming, and the law of success. If everyone followed these laws, the majority would achieve success. Thus, the first thing you need to do is have an image of your successful self in your mind. That is the only way the image of your successful self can become a reality in three or five years later. If the farmer didn't have the 10 bags of rice in his mind, 
There wouldn't be any bags of rice in storage, right? So where does the 10 bags of rice come from? It comes out of the farmer's head and into the storage room. The image of your successful self must be in your mind, be created in your mind in order for other people to see you succeed when it's actualized three to five years later. Each and every one of you needs to succeed in life. But the bigger question is, in what ways will you be successful? You need to know what success is so that you can achieve it, right? It seems that none of you are concerned. Anyways, you need to succeed, but when you actually think about success and how you want to achieve it, it actually is very, very complicated. The reason why it is complicated is because human beings are complicated. We, as humans, have flesh, a physical body. We also have something called a spirit. There's something similar to the spirit called the soul. Finally, we are surrounded with the environment. Each of these have their own desires, which is why it is complicated. On top of being complex, all of these desires need to be fulfilled. Let's begin with the flesh. The flesh has its needs. The spirit has its own separate wants that needs to be fulfilled. Our soul has its own desires. Now the flesh or our body would desire something like good health, right? It would want a long life as well. Finally, it desires a luxurious and secure life where you don't have to worry about basic needs. We can sum this up as live well. The spirit is not the same as our soul. We are actually differentiated from animals due to the spirit. Some people believe that human beings had common ancestors with monkeys. However, we are totally different from monkeys. If they were, we can't drag them around like dogs, right? We would need to take care of our ancestors if we don't want to be rude descendants. Yet we cage up our ancestors like dogs. In any event, monkeys are not our ancestors. Because since the beginning, monkeys were created to be monkeys by our creator. Human beings can be differentiated from animals. Because they don't have a spirit and only have a soul. It's very difficult to tell the difference. But the spirit deals with morals and ethics. It also has the concept of time. The spirit has a perception of time. Animals do not have a sense of time. We are able to realize when I die, my life will come to an end. We are able to look back on our past and think about our future. Human beings have this ability to transcend time as we can freely travel back and forth between the past and the future. Now, have you ever seen a dog that thought about my life as a dog is coming to an end and worry about what would happen after it dies? You won't ever see one because dogs do not have a spirit. They don't have any concept of time. Additionally, the spirit desires to receive and give love, which stems from our Creator. Animals don't have this desire. Have you seen a dog praying or honoring the dead? No matter how hard you train the dog, it won't honor its ancestors. No matter how uncivilized we are, we always think about the dead and about God. We have the spiritual ability and it allows us to be truly satisfied when we not only receive love from our Creator, but when we give love to Him as well. Now, the soul has something that even the animals have. Our feelings of happiness, sadness, anger, and joy comes from this, right? If you try to bother the dog when it eats, it gets angry, right? Yet, the dog will wag its tail if you give it something to eat. It can experience joy, which means that animals feel emotions. 
You can teach a dog tricks, right? You can tell it to bring object A or B, and the dog will bring it to you. They are able to remember things, like the face of its owner and the way to get home. This is possible because the soul is active. Thus, the soul decides to live a life that is full of peaceful feelings. It also has the desire to learn. Finally, for the environment, we have a desire to contribute to it. The reason why we want to contribute to the environment is because we not only utilize the benefits offered by nature and society, but we want to leave a good impact on them as well. If you were to die without giving back to other people and the environment, you will have the thoughts like, I'm such a useless person, and I only lived for myself and I didn't try to do anything beneficial, which can later become something you deeply regret. That's why you need to contribute to life, and these four elements make us who we are. And of the four, our true essence isn't our flesh or body, but it's actually found in the spirit and the soul. To be more specific, it is our spirit. Our spirit has a sense of time. And like the Bible states, He has also set eternity in the human heart. It wants to live forever. Our body or flesh is the house that our spirit and soul lives in. We have a straw roof and we have windows, right? Your spirit and soul look through them. There are openings in the house that allows us to hear sounds from the outside. We have a ventilation system that takes in fresh air and pushes the bad air out. There are also ducks and a restaurant where food is prepared and sent out when it's delivered to the restaurant. We have a music room and the house continuously maintains a warm temperature of 98.6 Fahrenheit. Warm water from the boiler cycles around through the pipes. When the warm water is drained, the house sometimes shakes. Because when the temperature drops, the automated thermostat forces the house to bring it back to optimal levels. Each house has its own bathroom, right? Your hands are the caretakers of the house and they do the maintenance work all over the house. The tenants of this house, which is our essence, are the spirit and the soul. We are human beings because we have a spirit, a soul and a flesh that is surrounded by the environment. Now, the goal of having a life where all four of these conditions are satisfied and the image of that life must be in your mind first in order to make it a reality three or five years later from now. The second motto of Adam is create the vision, right? What this is saying is that you need to have the image of your successful self in your mind. You need to make and have a vision. The vision that you create should be similar to the farmer picturing the 10 bags of rice or the 2 bags of peanuts in his mind in order to determine what needs to be done to get the rice or peanuts into his storeroom in the fall. It is very important to have that image of your successful self in your mind. Thus, the meaning behind create the vision is to have that image of yourself in your mind. Unless you have a complete picture of yourself being successful in three or five years in your mind, your life three or five years in the future will be no different from what it is right now. You are only living the life that you don't want right now because three or five years ago you did not have that image of the life you wanted in your mind. That's why you don't like your current life. You must have the image of the life you want to live in your mind. You might want to live a healthy life, right? 
You can become healthy by making plans to exercise. You also need to try and live a long and luxurious life, which means you need to have money in the bank, a house to live in, a car that you want to drive, and even donate as well. All of these things must be planned out. You also have to keep to your conscience and think seriously about how to live an eternal life. You need to live a life where you can contribute. However, these four are not separated elements. They are actually all connected. We all have flesh which wants to live well. Our soul wants to learn. The spirit wants to love. Finally, we have the environment. You need to quickly memorize this. The environment is where we want to contribute in life. When these four are equally achieved, you would be living a balanced life. And you have to achieve it. Now, according to the law of the minimum, if your life becomes unbalanced, for example, by not being healthy, then your life will become unhappy. If you're healthy but don't have money, that can also cause a misery. You have money and everything else, but if you got there by lying and going against your conscience, then your life will only ever be as good as the lowest level. Thus, you need to live a life where all four of these elements are satisfied equally. Now, these four areas are actually in harmony together and not separate. So it becomes meaningless if you focus on them individually. For example, there are people who say what good is just living well. However, you need to live well because of the people that you love. If you are poor, then your children, your spouse, and your parents who pass away after worrying about you are affected as they will all have to deal with it as well. This could lead to your children worrying about it and then even committing suicide because they can't overcome that difficulty. Even if they don't commit suicide, they might break down, become disappointed and lack energy. If you want to give them strength, you need to be living well. But to do that, learning becomes necessary. Everything stems from living well. People who are weak are like that because they lack love. With a tool like Atomy, your academic background, your looks, your age, your capital, your experience, and your skills don't matter as long as you have the passion. Atomy provides the ladder that will lead you to success. However, there are people who still don't try. And that's because they lack love in their hearts. Your thoughts need to be, do whatever you want with me. I'm ready to sacrifice anything for my loved ones as long as there's a way for us to live well. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to get there. That's how ready your heart should be. Are your hearts and minds prepared? Your answers lack energy. Are you ready? You need to live well for the people that you love. I married my wife because I love her very much. I followed her around for a year before I married her. I worked as a salaried employee and quit after 17 years because there was no retirement plan. So I started my own business. I started an online shopping mall. But since it was 1999, it was a comprehensive online shopping mall with over 10,000 items. But at that time, it was hard for older women to purchase. So I went bankrupt after three years. My house and my car got repossessed. We had to move into a small rental and had little to eat. I got a liver disease and my DPs got worse. My doctor friend told me that I had to stop working as well. Since I couldn't go out and make money, my wife had to work, but do you know how much she got? She could only make $1,500 a month. In Korea, a 50-year-old woman can't make more than that. She would take what she made and paid our rent with whatever was left, she would use it to make lunch for the kids and send them to school. 
One day I came home and it was really cold. So I told her to turn on the heater since it was so cold. And she just said, You don't think I know that? That was her response to my request. Which meant that she, too, was shivering from the cold and that she couldn't have turned it on if, it, if I was making money. I responded with, you need to use money when you don't have any, so turn it on. That's when the world around her collapsed. My wife, who would just love it off before, started telling me how due to my choices and actions, we were in this situation where we had to live in this cold, small rental place. Our relationship got worse as we continued to argue. I got to the point where my wife said, let's separate after our kids graduate. Now, my wife is something who does what she says. When I heard these words, my world came tumbling down. My knees became weak and I fell to the ground. I grabbed onto my wife's leg and I couldn't stop crying. I told her, please, don't leave. I, I can't just let you go like this. If you go now, you don't have a house to live in, no funds for your retirement. How will you survive? If you're going to leave, at least wait until I can give you a house and money for your retirement. I can't let you leave like this, so please don't leave just yet. And all she said to me was, when? I have now bought her house and put retirement money into her personal account. But she never tells me when she will be leaving me. Actually, we are never apart at home. I massage her legs and feet and her shoulders. We argue about who will massage who. Our sons tell us, you, you guys are just too much. We are living really well now. Thus, you need to live well, especially for the people that you love. This genuine passion that you need for success comes from joining of these three elements. If you don't have any passion, it means your love has cooled. You need to do whatever it takes to reignite the dying chamber so that the fire of love can burn and fill your passion again. Your thoughts need to be, I must live well for my loving children, for my husband who sacrifices everything for his family by working long hours. You have to be able to tell your husband, from now on, or in two years, I'll let you rest. Someone told me about a song he hated because the lyrics went, Hey dad, please cheer up. You have us to back you up. He couldn't understand what more they wanted because he was doing everything he could. So instead of singing the song, you need to change the lyrics. Hey dad, you did your best. We'll do it so you can rest. Think about how happy the fathers would be. Ed, you just need to wait three years so if you could do the laundry and clean so while I go out to do some work, okay honey? After that you can say you'll have to iron your own shirts and let him take charge of the home duties. You can tell him, if you don't iron them yourself, I can't get you a Mercedes-Benz, but it, I can if you do. So should I do the ironing or will you do it instead? He'll be willing if you tell him that. Anyways, you need to create the life that you want to be playing like a movie in your head. This movie should be about the life that you want to live. Where you're healthy and lively, that needs to be in your head. You need to have the image of the car you will be driving, the way you will help and treat your friends when you see them, and the way you will take care of your relatives. That all must be in the movie that's playing in your mind. The house, the car, the trip that you want. And the way you can support your parents need to be created in your mind. After organizing these thoughts, you need to make your movie. As long as the movie is made well, it can all become a reality. 
Someone asked me, it becomes a reality if you just envision it. If you can create it clearly in your mind, you will definitely realize it. There's actual scientific evidence because our body can't differentiate between imagination and reality. Let's do a small experiment. Imagine that I'm feeding you the sweet and sour red seeded uh, ripe pomegranate into your mouth. As you chew on the seeds, the sweet and sour juices of the aromatic pomegranate fill your mouth. What happened? You salivated, right? You might want to go to the hospital if nothing happened. As human beings, when we imagine things, like eating pomegranate, our body will react as if it actually ate it. There are many scientific cases that can prove this. This is known as a self-fulfilling prophecy. In essence, if you have a thought that you truly desire and need, which can also provide satisfaction, then your body will change and adapt to make it a reality. Here's an example. Most of you are still tired when you wake up, right? So for those of you who feel like your body is heavy and sluggish, I have a quick and easy one-step remedy for you. One way would be to take hemohim, but this remedy is actually way more effective. Imagine that you receive 30,000 US dollars every month in your bank account. How would you feel? Would your body feel heavy like a rock or light as a feather? You'd actually be cured of almost any illness and your immune system would just be through the roof. All of this can happen if you can get 30,000 US dollars a month. Our body will have the same reaction. Whether you genuinely received it or if you truly believed that it would happen. Now, if you just go out and tell people about the business, only thinking about royal masters who receive 30 to 50,000 dollars a month and believing you can do it too by being energetic when you talk to them about it. You will never succeed because that's not the right way. Instead, you need to envision yourself as a person who makes 30 to 50 thousand dollars a month and truly believe that you do. Follow the faith is our third motto, and faith is believing in the unseen. You need to picture yourself already driving that Mercedes-Benz, living in that five-bedroom home penthouse, giving help to your friends in need, supporting your siblings and letting your children study what they want, even though these are only images in your mind and are not reality yet. Your own two feet must be standing on the unseen. Again, our third model is follow the faith. You have to be in the unseen in order to gradually bring the current reality to that vision. Your vision is what makes this work and it will drive you to achieve it. You won't be able to achieve anything without a dream. So you must have a dream and create your vision. This is entirely different from having a delusion. If you think that is possible, it will become a belief because a belief is having faith in your thoughts. When you say that someone has conviction, it is because that person believes it will become a reality. Belief can create miracles. From the beginning, I believed that Aramie would become a global company and that we would become the number one MLM company in Korea. I was confident that we could achieve it. Now, when I first met Crown Master Jong Soo Park, she was an owner of a duck soup restaurant that eventually failed. At that restaurant, I gathered the original 17 members and held Aramis first seminar there. During the seminar, I told them, one of you will be living in the biggest apartment in Iksan and will be the one paying the most taxes there as well. Atomy will be a big business and a global company. When you become a crown master, I will give you a luxury car. 
You will receive 300,000 US dollars in cash. Yet the car I was driving at the time was a used minivan that costed $2,800. As I drove around in this shaky minivan, I told people I would give them a luxury car. I already had a clear image of the luxury car in my mind. And it eventually popped out into reality. Currently, Crown Master Jong Soo Park is driving around in that car. Where did that car come from? It came out of my head and I had, a, I had to believe that it was possible. I held a belief that it would be, become a reality. You're able to see that car because it originated in the unseen. It came out of my head. I put this image into the mind of Crown Master Jong Soo Park. So before Crown Master Jong Soo Park actually drove it around, it was already being driven in her head for some time. That's why she's driving around in that car right now. You drove it with you, right? I saw it parked just outside. Miracles are created by faith. I think the majority of you have come here because you're poor and in need. There are also those who failed after doing well back in the day. Some of you might already have your retirement set, but you don't have money to share with others. There might be those on the verge of death. Some might be busy trying to resolve the overdraft. Others might be worried about how they will survive the next month. The only way to overcome all of this is to envision yourself earning thirty to fifty thousand dollars a month in your mind and truly believe it. Once you do, your expression, your speech, your eyes and your action will change accordingly. That is why you must have a vivid image of this in your mind. After that, you need to follow the faith. Thus, you need to create a movie and continuously play it over and over again. Now to create your movie, you need to have a scenario in order for you to plan out your movie. You will be writing your life scenario. In this scenario, there's a big circle like this and smaller circles where you can fill in items. Everyone must fill in all these empty spaces and you can present it by submitting tomorrow. At least one item from the four elements must be in this form. For example, for flesh, you can fill in a space for house. If you want to live in a rich life, you will need a house, right? What else can we use? You can put a car. Travel might be another one. We already wrote health here. One can be about the children you love and the education. There's filial duties. What else? You can add volunteering or donations. It would be nice to have cash, right? At least one example of these four elements must be in your life scenario. For the contribute in life, you have volunteering and offering. After that, you need to score yourself on a scale from 1 to 10. If you're naturally healthy, you give yourself a higher score. Your current house, when compared to your dream house, might be just a 2. For car, you can give yourself a zero if you don't have a license. For travel, you went on a few domestic trips. Your children did alright, you couldn't do much for your parents, you only did a little volunteering. And for cash, it might be negative due to the debt. Afterwards, there will be these thoughts that you can connect. When you connect them, you'll get your wheel of life. If your wheel is jacked and rough, it won't roll easily, right? When all these areas become 10 points and then connect these dots, you get a big round wheel. Thus, you need to write ways on how you can make them all tense in these boxes. For house, you might be living in a small rental place right now, but your dream home might be a big five bedroom house, how much would that be? Let's say just it's a one million dollar house. It might be more in bigger cities, but we'll leave it at that. You need to have a deadline for your goals as well. So when? We'll say in the year 2022.
You need to be as specific as possible and not something abstract like five years later, ten years later, because five years from now, it will still be five years from now. So set a deadline for yourself. If you want, you can add a midterm goal as well. For example, if your long term would be this home by 2022, then your midterm goal could be a $500 house. Uh, that you want to achieve by 2018. You should be setting your goals in detail like this. Next, we have a car. What kind of car do you want? Have you not thought about it? Let's say Mercedes-Benz. If you don't know the price, get an invoice for your car. Take a picture of the car you want and post it in your home. For travel, write about who you will go with. There are three tricks you need when writing these goals. The first one is to be very clear. You need to be clear and concrete as possible. So it's best to write everything, like the color of the car, the number of the rooms, or even an exact address. The second one is having a deadline. Finally, the last one is the amount. You need to have how much it costs before you can actually buy it. You write the details about your children's education and your filial duties. Instead of thinking that giving just $200 or $300 to your parents, you should give them living expenses, send them two, three thousand dollars so that they can maintain a rich life. Pay any medical fees and go somewhere with their friends. That is what fulfilling your filial duties is about. For donation, you can write how you will contribute. It's also nice to have some cash, right? It would be nice to have money that you can use freely. How nice would it be to have like $50,000 in cash? You can use that money to help out your friends, to give as a gift for your niece's or nephew's wedding, to provide support for your siblings and to just give some money to your niece or nephew who got into good college. Each of you need to have your own account for personal use. My wife and I have a mutual account, but we also have a personal account that we agreed uh, not to ask each other about. I told her I won't meddle, okay? She would just say, no meddling. If you have a personal account with a few ten or hundred thousand dollars, Life becomes that much more comfortable. You wouldn't be struggling, right? So you need cash. All of these things need to be clearly defined in your mind. So if you took an estimate of all of this, then you would need at least thirty to fifty thousand dollars a month to fully realize your life scenario. However, the majority of the people think it would be happy if I could just make three to seven thousand dollars a month. Would you be rich with just three to seven thousand dollars a month? Would you call that a successful life? From my experience, it is impossible to achieve success. Actually, those who make three to seven thousand dollars work the hardest. There are also many people who mistake that making lots of money is difficult. Actually, the majority of people think this way. But in truth, making huge amounts of money is not that hard. It's quite the opposite. Those who make small amounts have it worse. If you had someone who made $1,000 or $2,000 and yet another one who makes $50,000 and another one who makes $100,000, the one who makes $1,000 works the hardest. Currently, those who make three dollars to $7,000 are the ones who work their socks off. The smart people are the ones looking for these jobs. But don't try to earn only that much because it's very difficult to earn three to seven thousand dollars. However, not many people think about earning thirty to fifty thousand dollars. There's not much competition. We, we were also taught to budget our expenses based on our income, right? They say that you can avoid bankruptcy as long as you keep your income equal or greater than your expenses. Yet those who do this are the ones who are poor. You can't become rich by saving money. 
It's the reverse. Instead of budgeting your income based on expenses, you need to first determine your expenditures like this. After you make an estimate like you need $30,000 to $50,000, you just need to go find a job where you can earn that amount. You don't need to search any further because it's possible with Atomy. If you go to other success lectures, they will also tell you to calculate expenses and then find a job that can cover it. Now at Atomy, we even provide a way to achieve it. So none of you have to worry about that. Thus, your income needs to be based on your expenses. If you truly believe that you will be a person who earns thirty to $50,000 a month and are certain you will be living that life, your life attitude will change. And that will allow you to achieve it. This is what the law of success is. So you need to set a goal of who you ultimately want to be first and work towards achieving it. All the successful people did as well. Even the 500 successful people who Napoleon Hill interviewed for Andrew Carnegie and had followed this law, they all envisioned their successful self in the mind first. Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, right? Before the light bulb came into this world, it was first switched on in Edison's head. After experimenting several thousands or ten thousands of times, the light bulb that was shining in Edison's mind came into being in the real world. The law of success is like this. When Henry Ford was inventing the car, he also thought about the roads his cars would use. He realized that he can make cars cheaper through mass production and that he would need a conveyor system for it to work. This eventually revolutionized the transportation industry. All the people who achieved success envisioned their successful self in the minds first. So what needs to be in your mind? You need to create a fabulous movie for yourself, living the successful life that you want. You need to be able to fall head over heels for it. A movie that is so splendid that if you could achieve it, you would do anything to make it happen. You have to make a movie that doesn't discount anything. And you would be completely satisfied with its content. When you have this in your mind, your body will be as strong as any superhero. Once that exciting life of earning $50,000 is envisioned in your mind, the way you walk will become different. Do you think you would be sluggishly dragging your feet? Of course not. If you believe you will earn $50,000 in months, you would be so stylish and as you strut around with confidence. Your thoughts would be, everyone follow me, as you walk to your friends to loudly tell them, don't live your life that way. When I can clearly see how your retirement will be, I came here to help you as it seemed too pitiful. You need to change yourself with your vision like this. You also need to be standing above your vision until the day you achieve it. Belief is not having faith in the seed. As long as you have faith, you will achieve it. Thus, you can't wake from that dream or vision. Although you can't be in your vision here, you come back to reason as soon as you leave, and that becomes a problem. You must not regain your senses. Instead, you need to first become crazy, become the embodiment of your vision and then make those around you crazy as well, as you transmit this craziness to others and make them lunatics as well. You will be closer to realizing your vision. Let's look at an example of someone's life scenario. This person did a good job in filling the form out because everything was written in detail. When you go back to your room, use this as a model to write your life scenario. After filling everything in, there's another form you need to do. For this form, write down your mastership and income plans, including the deadlines and amounts you have in mind. You should try to make it a 3-5 to five year plan. I'll end on that note. Thank you for listening.